Hello and welcome to this video and to September's book review. We're a little bit makeshift today with our setup so I'm gonna have to sort of slouch a little bit so if I start sitting up and you lose part of my head that's why. September's been a weird month for reading. I haven't felt like I've read a lot and I don't feel like I've got a lot to talk to you about but in the grand scheme of things there is actually a lot of books. Um, I just can't necessarily talk to you about it. So instead of leaving you on that weird sort of cliffhanger, we're going to jump straight into it. So at the beginning of the month, I set myself a little challenge to try and read all 10 of the Puffin, Puffin? Puffin modern classics children's books from the set that I got from the works um, a little while ago. I'll link that video up here if you're interested because there's some other books that came with it. But there are the 10 books that are in the set. And I set myself a challenge to read all of them within 48 hours. Now that video is coming for you and I do talk a lot about the books in that video so instead of spoiling that one now and telling you each individual book I'm just gonna say this was how we started um, and the video is coming possibly next Wednesday or the following Wednesday video I can't quite remember my scheduling for that. So this is how we started and I enjoyed reading some of the uh, modern classics of the children's books world um, so that was fun. I then read Such Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This follows Amira who is a essentially a babysitter or a nanny. Um, she looks after a child, a white child from a affluent family. She is a black woman um, and on one occasion she is apprehended in a supermarket because they think she's stolen the child. Now that's how I took the book from the blurb and I thought it would be more about the aftermath of that accusation and things like that. Not quite. That is part of the book but the blurb of this makes it seem like it's a bigger part of it than it actually is and that sort of threw me a little bit that it wasn't the central plot line. Really it's about life, it's about looking at racism and privilege and all of that kind of stuff more than the aftermath of someone being accused of stealing somebody else's child. There's the other thing about this book is it appears to be one that I put off a lot. So although I wanted to read it and I was really intrigued by it, certainly when I read the blurb and all of that kind of stuff, but for months I'm like right I'll read that one this month and then I never did it. I was like I'll read that one this month and then I never did it. And then when I was reading it I was like oh I should read my book but meh. So I think it's one that's very easily easy to put off and I have seen other booktubers, other people that I watch do the same thing so I don't know what it is about this book that makes people not want to read it although they want to read it. Does that make sense? The main thing about this was that I didn't really like any of the characters the only like decent relationship I think in this book was between Amira and the child that she was looking after and I just felt so sorry for that kid because essentially she was ignored and not understood. It wasn't really what I thought and I just felt so sorry for the kid that the mom just didn't seem to care and um, she was a bit more of an accessory to help the career rather than actual you know she wanted the child and things like that maybe it's just the way I read into it I don't know um, and the other thing about this there was a lot of emphasis about having a five-year plan and knowing what you want to do as a career and all of that kind of stuff and as someone who has essentially stumbled through her work career I, I don't really believe in that I don't think you need a career plan to succeed in life quite personally so Although it was quite an interesting book looking at different opinions on sort of those big topics of privilege and racism and things, I was so thrown that it wasn't about what it essentially says on the back that I just couldn't get on board with this book very well. So it was good, it was enjoyable-ish, but I don't think I'll be rereading it. Um, so that's Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I'm then essentially just trying to get through by the end of the year all the gifts of books that I got 
for like Christmas and my birthday and things like that, which are both at the beginning or the end of the year and the beginning of the year, December and January. Um, and I'm still working my way through them because my family, extended family, are all very generous and I essentially ask for books and I probably will again this year, which is why it's important that I get through them. So the next one I read was Breathless by Jennifer Niven. Uh, she is the author of All the Bright Places and Holding Up the Universe, yeah that's the book isn't it, which are two books that if I remember rightly I enjoyed them a lot. So this one is about Claudine, or Claude, she has these big plans for when she graduates that she's going to go travelling with her friend and things like that, but then her parents say that they're splitting up and that she's not allowed to share anything and she then gets whisked away to a remote island to be with her mum so it means she can't do what she wants in the summer but she then meets Jeremiah I think it was or known as Maya and summer doesn't seem quite so bad shall we say so this is a YA contemporary I would probably say and I read a fair amount of them although I'm quite considerably older now than the main characters in these books but normally that isn't a problem but for this one I really did feel disconnected from the main character. I found her kind of irritating. I know she's going through a big shift in life and it's not one that I've experienced but the way that she saw the world and things like that was just irritating and I do not know why she was so sex crazed like it was the only thing her and her friends really spoke about and it was a big deal and the be all and end all and I don't really get that but saying that it was all quite sex positive this book it was all very realistic what was said about sex in it and it was important that you know consent and all of that kind of thing were very much highlighted in it so although I was slightly irritated by their sex craze mindset at least the way it was written was positive and well done I think. Obviously in this she's meeting a guy during a period of turmoil in her life and I think all of the parts around feeling lost and not knowing what's going to come next and life isn't turning out the way you expect. I enjoyed all of those parts of it. I think it was clear and I think it was handled very well in like you can have those feelings but it's not like life will carry on kind of thing and that's a good thing. But there was a lot of repeating of phrases and things in this. If the floor, floor fell out from underneath her one more time during the reading of this book I was going to fling it across the room. Um, it was very irritating, which I don't remember that being the case with Jennifer Nibbett's other books. So maybe it's just that this one didn't, I didn't connect with this one quite so well. I didn't feel that the relationship in this one was built up as well as some of the others. But it's been a long time since I've read them. So when my books come out of storage, I think we might need to have a reread of those because I don't think Breathless is going to remain in my collection. Although again, like such a fun age, I liked my reading experience with it, I just, there's probably too many negatives that outweigh the positives despite the fact that I did give this like a 3, 3.5 stars because it was, it was good but it wasn't, you know, like blow your socks off good um, in, for want of a better word, it was fine. Saying that, the end bit of this book where you have the acknowledgements uh, is very interesting because a lot of the plot line for this was taken from Jennifer Niven's own life um, so there's parts of semi-autobiographical which I obviously didn't know during reading it but that made some of it make a bit more sense so I personally wouldn't recommend this one as one of the books to read from this author but I'm glad I did and I am interested in what she brings out next so that's Breathless by Jennifer Niven. Now continuing on my gifts theme, I read Olive by Emma Gannon. Next. This follows Olive who is um, early 30s as she's coming to terms with different parts of life and her friends going in different directions and the main focus of this is around fertility and whether or not to have a baby and about making that choice not to and it being a valid choice and things like that. And although 
sort of the procreation part of it is not particularly mentioned on the back. I thought we might have other topics too, but this book is heavy on the thought of children. Should you have them? Shouldn't you have them? People that want them that can't have them are people that have made that choice that is definitely not for them and that not being seen as valid and that it's just a phase and they'll change their mind and stuff like that. So all of that was interesting and I'm obviously of the age of these characters it's very much the stage of life I'm in and those thoughts and things are definitely going through my mind so it was very interesting for me to an eye-opening for me to see lots of different opinions on it to help formulate my thoughts on it but I did think we would cover some other topics so I did really enjoy this book I gave it four and a half stars I think to get five we probably would have needed to step a little bit away from that topic and add some more into it because at points it did feel a bit repetitive and a bit we're going over the same ground here just in different types of words. I found this incredibly well written and incredibly easy to read. I could find that in like an hour and a half or whatever I could get a good hundred pages in which is not the case with all books. Um, that's how I kind of knew I was enjoying it a lot because the, the speed I read it was quick whereas when I'm not enjoying something quite as much I'm much slower with it but I did find at points that Olive is not a particularly sympathetic empathetic character and it's all based around a group of four friends four female friends they have an incredibly strong bond they've been friends for like ever and that strand of strong female friendship is in it a lot but they're not very good at communicating with each other and that surprises me after that many years of friendship that that isn't a thing that they can do very well. I don't get why in these kind of books they always have sort of glamorous jobs. Olive is a writer in a, excuse the dog, a writer in like a feminist online magazine. One of her friends is an artist and works in an art gallery. Another one is a high shot high-flying lawyer why do they never have standard normal works in an office every day kind of job they always have you know jobs that people are jealous of I don't get it because it's not always the way that life is but that being said I did really enjoy Olive I think it helps that I'm at that stage in my life so could take quite a lot from it I personally in my thoughts on it all would associate more with um, or Cecily I'm never entirely sure how you pronounce that name that's probably where I am with it if you've read the book then you'll know what I mean so yeah there's definitely some flaws to it but one that I did enjoy and probably my favorite read of the month and that's Olive by Emma Gannon I was hoping to have one more book to talk to you about and that is Orange is the New Black by Piper Kerman which is the non-fiction memoir that led to the series Orange is the New Black but I'm currently halfway through it so I will have finished it by the end of September but we won't I can't share it with you now because I haven't I'm only I'm only halfway through well I will say on it though is it's very different from the TV show the TV show definitely glamorized the memoir more made it more dramatic um, and also made Piper more irritating which is interesting but we'll go through that one more so in October which could potentially be quite a long book review because I'm on jury duty for the first two weeks of the month and I don't know I've never done it before so I don't know if I'm being naive and thinking that there's going to be a lot of downtime and I might get to read a lot but I will explain everything and everything I've read that uh, in October to you next month so if you've enjoyed this one and what I've read in September please give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already and you're interested in what I'm reading then please go ahead and click that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one bye